What are we talking about today? Worst mistakes I've made on Airbnb. <laughs> yeah, we all know I'm perfect. I don't make any mistakes. What are, what are we even doing? That all right, fine. I'm, I'm gonna stop lying. Today we're talking about my worst mistakes when starting my Airbnb business. Let's get into it. Roll the intro. Bing bong. Nice flipping choice. What's up, you short-term rental savants? It's Garrett Brown from the Nice Flipping Choice channel. Back again with another acronym style video, STRs, Airbnb, VRBO, whatever you want to call it. I really only say Airbnb because I know it's going to help the algorithm, but otherwise I would just say STR or short-term rental, which is what it truly is, vacation rental, something like that. I do it for the algorithm. That's the only reason I do this. Now, while I am going to be exposing my deepest and darkest secrets today, go ahead and slide Slap a little like and subscribe and all that down in there to make me feel better about myself after making this video. Once you subscribe, we become best friends. It's automatic. YouTube told me. Now, let's not stop this train and get right into the list though, because I'm not here to waste anybody's time. And I'm also trying to get this over with as quickly as possible so I can get away from my embarrassment. My first tip that I wish I would have done when starting my Airbnb business is using the same color sheets and towels in as many rooms and as many places as you can. Most of the time we use white. We tried other colors here and there. We tried to do different themes. And there are some decorative towels that can go in and there's a bit of design to it to, you know, to add that flair to it. But in the end, having white towels and white sheets, there's a reason hotels do this. It's much easier to clean, much easier to keep up with, easier to see stains, and it's easier to replace the product if you need something new. You know what type of towel you most likely got. You should be marking the brands you get. That way you know what the best one after you do your research and which ones are able to get easily. Always using 100% cotton sheets as well as my recommendation. You do not need to cheap out on sheets because sheets Sheets by far and bedding in general can make or break an Airbnb stay for you. Now, duvet covers and comforters are a little difficult because you try to have some flair to them sometimes and not just keep them basic as ever. That also leads into my second tip, which will help your life no matter what, especially with comforters and washing and all these things, which will be the toughest thing as a cleaning crew and as an owner to keep maintaining and make sure the standard is there that you want. I go into the second tip, which is buy two, if not three, of every single bit of bedding that you get. If you're buying sheets for a bed, I recommend getting three so that way you always can have clean sheets that are rotated and have a backup in case one thing goes wrong. Two is the minimum by far, but I really, really recommend three, especially if you have multiple properties on one site, which you might if you're doing something like me, like a glamping site. Now it is a little more expensive up front, but it will help your operation so much going forward. You have to get two sets no matter what, that's not debatable, but a third one might be the smartest thing you can do. I didn't do this at first, I did two and I did different colors like I mentioned on the first one. Now I'm going to streamline it. I'm always going to have white sheets and have probably three sets for every single bed that I do. My third step is setting up your message system early when you start dealing with guests. I use Logify as my property management software and I can have custom automated responses that go out each day. They get an email asking how their stay was and if they can leave a review. There's an email that goes out right when people check in a couple hours later asking if everything went okay. All these things work great. I didn't get all of these things in place and it's harder to know it until you get further along and see what guests ask and which one of your systems don't work or you send a really long email and after you look at it you're like yeah I probably shouldn't have done that one I need to probably tone it down a bit I had a couple confusing emails because I didn't have my code system set up with my August smart locks and Airbnb so I recommend really researching into your messaging system early on and before you launch you can't get it 100 percent I'm sure because there will be things that come up that you're not even expecting but do your best to really have it laid out before you launch your place or even go further with your business. That way it makes life easier when you expand and have multiple properties. Some of these same messaging will just automatically go out and it will really alleviate some of the work you have to do in your business. Number four is always double check after your cleaners, especially when you're working with them the first or second time. Now, when you get really good cleaners and you trust them and you're you know further away, you don't have to do this necessarily. Have them always send pictures and videos, things like that. You'll be able to find some cleaners that you trust, but always get the photos. But the main reason I'm saying check after your cleaners the first one or two times you're working with them, I guarantee you there's going to be some cleaners you work with that you will never hire again, especially if you go check back after. That happened to me a couple times. I will tell a story in a second. And then if you do like the cleaner, you'll be able to go ahead and tell them maybe a couple mistakes they made. Don't lead off with the mistakes. You know, praise what they did right first. I think they call it like a, a sandwich compliment or something where you give a compliment, 
say, hey, I would actually like to do this better. This is some things I was thinking. And then you can give them another compliment, maybe on the back end. Other people may not agree with me, but I like to be a nice person, especially with people I work with. And I want them to make them feel very proud of the work they did and not just immediately start tearing them down for things. Now, I was finding different cleaners and giving them a shot at, you know, seeing what their business would be like. I hired one cleaner. She was pretty good. She immediately got out of the car and started complaining, saying how much further it was, even though I had sent her the address and told her, hey, check to make sure it's not too far for you. I even agreed I would give her a little more money on top of what we agreed to if she did want to come and clean and it worked. And then I gave her some pretty simple instructions of leading the dirty laundry at the front of my ranch house that's at the front of the property I have in this particular area and just to leave them out the way because I have a massive porch that can be covered. She ended up leaving the sheets on the front of my geodome that does not have a porch covering and it rained that night and she left them in a trash bag and the sheets were ruined. Obviously not calling that lady back. I didn't check that day. The joke was on me that day and I should have checked and I learned my lesson. Now I have a couple very trusted cleaners that I really don't worry about, but even then I still go back and double check sometimes and have to make small adjustments to what I personally think is the standard that I'm looking for with cleaning. And number five is the washing and drying situation. This really comes down to your linens. I'm having to work on adding another washer and dryer onto the site once I get to four sites up here. I only have a washer and dryer in my main house, but the issue that we run into is when the house is booked and the dome isn't booked and we're trying to clean sheets, my cleaner might have to take them off site. I might have to take them off site. We're a little more rural, so it's harder to find wash and fold cleaners. And I've heard like, I love my cleaners to death and they're amazing people and I'm glad to have them part of the team, but I don't like having the laundry off site. And then there's a chance that they may not show up with the extra set of laundry that I need. I like to try to keep it on site as much as we can, or me being more, a little more in control of the inventory. And that may be something that I get better with over time and get better systems, but we are trying to add another washer and dryer. So make sure you look into that situation. What you're going to do, wash and fold, do it yourself, let your cleaner do it. Number six is not buying too much before you're actually ready ready with the place. You can buy some small things if you really want to, but I highly, highly recommend waiting to buy the bulk of the things that are going into your places that you're starting up, buying them when you get the property almost more set up or more verified of what you're doing and where you're going to go. I bought a lot of things thinking I was going to do one type of theme, and then we end up changing and doing some other types of themes. I bought some things and they wouldn't fit in the layout that I had, and then I either had to sit on them or it just didn't work out with the color scheme or a, a million different things. My Amazon cart was booming, and I wasted a lot of money probably buying things too early that I'm going to have to use later on or just eat the cost on because I was too anxious. But you know, that's just what happens sometimes. Number seven is ordering the same toiletries for all your properties. If you have soap, conditioners, body wash, dispensers, and things like that, which I do recommend getting a wide mouth one that can, you know, stick to your bathroom wall. They make them that you don't have to drill anything. They just use these little special glue. I say get those and then get the big hotel size refillable soaps and all those things like that. Your costs are going to go way down, but use the same type at all your properties. That way, when you buy more, you can always steal some from another property, bring it somewhere you need it. Try, what, if you haven't noticed through some of my lists, try to minimize the different SKUs of products you're getting. Try to keep the same SKUs for all of your rentals. That way, you know exactly where it's at and you can have a spreadsheet of, hey, I need to order some of these. This is where I got it from. And you really can trust your research. And number eight, and I would love y'all's opinion on this in the comments, because this is one thing I'm struggling with myself, is the taxes that you charge to the guest. Now, Airbnb does collect your state tax. Well, it does for me in Texas. I'm pretty sure it does in every other one. And I have it set on my direct booking website to collect the state tax as well here. It is a 6% tax that goes on to all vacation rentals. My county, though, has a 7% hotel occupancy tax that I have to pay. I have not passed that cost on to my guests because I don't want them to be shell-shocked when they see a 13% tax bill. And I've tried to bake it a little bit more into my cost to add a few more dollars on top to really try to supplement that going forward. Now, I personally think this is the method I'm probably going to continue with, but I'd love to hear some opinions on anybody that has actually started this and done some different tax ideas with it in the comments of what they do and what they charge their guests. Because because I, I also debate back and forth of if I should charge them that extra 7%, maybe another couple percent on top. I'm not sure, but let me know in the comments what you think, because I would love to get some opinions on that. And the last but not least, but it has been one of my biggest things, is the storage. You got to have a lot of storage. Figure out your storage methods 
going forward? Are you going to build a little shed? Are you going to have storage in a garage? Are you going to have a couple owner's closets? There's a lot more storage that goes into it, especially if you have a few sites actually on your property like me with the glamping. And this will make your life way easier because you can get things out of the way and it won't be so cluttered. But I just did a weird top nine instead of a top 10 because I'm different. Yeah, I'm different. Well, anyways, I appreciate you watching all the way through. As always, peace.